Okay guys, um, I'm going to try and show some miniatures, not that they're that good, but to show you that even people that have been doing this for a long time uh, can still basically just be slathering paint on miniatures. It's not like uh, uh, you're going to become a showcase painter uh, through the years, although I guess if you put the effort into it, you might. Uh, in my case, I haven't. But uh, I had mentioned in one of my reviews that uh, one of the things I had been working on painting-wise was some uh, zombie pirates. So I thought I would show you the status of a few of them uh, on the table, if I can, with this flip here. I'm doing this uh, based on something that I learned from uh, a neat guy out on YouTube by the name of Gunny. And uh, it's unusual spelling, G-A-U-G-H-K-N-E-E. -E pronounced like the um, gunny from uh, an NCO from the Marines and uh, really a neat guy sharing his journey into Warhammer and 40k and uh, sometimes does things in an orthodox way but uh, always entertaining to watch his videos. This particular guy here is from the um, Hordes or War Machine uh, privateer Press miniatures. I'm not sure of what the faction, but uh, this was one of the, the pirates that I've painted up, as you can see. You know, a little bit of splash of color and uh, nothing all that fantastic. I doubt this flip is going to show a whole lot of shading and, uh, and that type of thing, but uh, Gunny uh, uses a, a magnifying glass that's about a half a crystal ball. My magnifying glass came out of a dollar store spy kids uh, kit so um, it's probably not going to give you the kind of detail but uh, with my figures uh, you don't necessarily need to get that close to see what's going on there's a another one in that range I really like the uh, sculpts from privateer pets on these guys um, this is what I was talking about. Uh, I, I get to messing around with trying to achieve what I want in blue flame or, or an ear looking glow. And once I get kind of where I want to be, then I kind of start losing interest over the mundane things. And it takes me forever to finish up the, the models. But I will be getting these things wrapped up because I've got a lot of other models that could be using some painting. Um, this, I think, was one of the leaders of the groups working with a little yellow fire and yet trying to get that ghostly green hue. Like I said, I don't think I can get up close enough to show you a lot of detail of what I do, but it's not all that fantastic, but it's playable for role-playing games, especially when the guys you role-play with... Uh, most of them either have to pull a mini all the way up to their nose to where they're cross-eyed or their arms aren't long enough to focus in on it anyway, so that's the benefit with gaming with uh, older dudes. But uh, this is a Reaper model. Didn't do anything with the base other than the green stuff. Most of these guys I tried to make them look like they were standing in some breakish water, maybe with some kind of algae or something. Um, I picked up some real nice broken wooden uh, bases from a company out of Poland called Micro Art Studio. Uh, really nice pieces, and um, I've been uh, wanting to take some of these guys that have these slotted bases, which I really don't care that much for, and uh, let's see about trying to cut the slotted base off and put them on. Most of these really aren't going to take too much to finish up, but uh, just taking the time to go in there and do it. I'm also not a fantastic sculptor. Uh, this group of guys that I game with, oh, I've got one more figure here that I'm working that's constantly falling over. I thought this guy was really cool. I love the little detail that they put into these things. This guy's got his diving bell on. The, the faceplate is open, holding his gun out. He's got some kind of a tiny little... I don't know, fish skeleton or something coming out of the cuff of his pants. 
The diving suit itself is shredded, still got the hose, but it's not connected to anything. Just a really, really nice sculpts. Fit in well with that undead zombie seafarer that I like. Uh, the group of guys that I, I game with, we had a um, Savage Worlds campaign where we kind of played ourselves, and uh, it was sort of a, a ramped up game where we were uh, scaling up three, four, five times a game and became legendary after four or five uh, episodes. Uh, it gave us a chance to try some of the um, abilities that you don't get to normally. Uh, one of the fellows wanted to play uh, the Shadow. Uh, his, eventually his character was going to be like the Shadow. And I couldn't find any Shadow figures out there. So I found this Heroclix guy uh, holding a machine gun white robe. He really doesn't have a face. It's almost skeletal. There's no nose on it. But uh, I started with that. And I am no sculptor. But what I did was cut the um, machine gun down. Uh, this guy was known for carrying really large handguns. Uh, painted his cloak black. He always had a red scarf. I did my best because most of the posters from the 40s when this guy was around the nose, he had this large nose that was always over the top of the scarf where I just couldn't make this guy quit looking like some kind of a Popeye ogre. So um, I uh, end up sculpting the nose underneath and then sculpting this scarf down the back, painted him up. And then in the other hand, I sculpted uh, a very simple suggestion of the Ashanti dog dagger which was part of the movie that was released, the newer movie about the uh, the guy, and then I cut him off and put him on a new base. So, you know, for our purposes, that became very playable, and, and he seemed to enjoy it. For myself, uh, I took a figure. I don't, I didn't have two of them, so I can't show you what I started with, but you guys might be familiar with him. He was um, called, I think, Kingpin. He had a white double-breasted jacket on and purple pants, a walking stick, and a cigar in his hand and was bald with my vanity. I put some of my gray hair on him and a mustache and beard. I cut the coat down to be more like a bomber jacket and jeans, because I'm definitely more of a bomber jacket and jeans kind of guy. Put a curl on the end of the cane. Yeah, I am moving about with a cane these days, but uh, that hook on the back of the cane comes in real handy on finding places for it. Again, cutting it off the base, just putting it on a simple base, adding a little bit of greenery down there and some rocks, and makes it quite playable. Not that I'm a particularly um, <laughs> saintly guy, because definitely I'm not, but uh, the whole premise for our game starting out was that uh, a mosque contacted us because one of my relatives was buried in it, and they found this crucifix, and we they wanted it out of there. So we went there, and the moment we touched the crucifix, we were teleported back into 1939 along with um, just the things that were in my room. Fortunately, there's a lot of sharp edge weapons in my room, but uh, our Game Master was fantastic, and uh, we had a lot of fun uh, jumping from universe to universe and time to time. Uh, the Game Master got taken off and became intent on all types of evil deeds, and the rest of us were trying to track him down and stop him. I think he finally got us so powerful that one of our own members end up uh, uh, turning us, uh, setting a trap for us uh, on a ship, and and we've been assembled by the Borg. I think that's uh, we just got so powerful that he had to do something with us. So anyway, there's a few figures that I've toyed around with. Um, don't know how well these will show up, but uh, if they do, I'll post them up as uh, some of my painting that's up on the bench and. Uh, Check out Gunny if you get a chance. Uh, his stuff is always fun to, to watch. And um, thanks, Gunny, for coming up with this uh, alternative to not having a very good macro situation with flips. He does an awful lot with his flip, but then he has a pretty neat group of trained monkeys to help him out. Thanks, guys. God bless, and I will talk to you later.